I now know how to help you out of this thing. Exactly. I, I, I can I can ask you a question and pull creativity out of you. Mm -hmm. So like that's what makes me dope. Mm, damn Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. What up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. A-Bike Podcast, episode 198. Almost at that 200 mark, you know what I'm saying? But we got a special guest in the building. She do a lot of things. Uh, she the best baker as far as the vegan, vegan cookies in the world. Uh, mental health advocate, uh, poet, educator, uh, college graduate. Uh, you went to Kentucky, Kentucky State, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. East Sider, mentor, uh, thrifter, uh, MMA fighter. <laughs> no, that's not me. That I, one ain't me. <laughs> I found out you. I found out you know a little, a little bit though. That's what oh, I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. It's a joke. I know you're not a real <laughs> MMA fighter, <laughs> but I heard that you do a little, a little something, something. Yeah, I got a um a little bit of background training in um, Muay Thai, yeah, uh, Kempo, and um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she can handle business. <laughs> but this is Maya Star, aka Peter Poet. What's good? Yeah. What up, though? Yeah, I know your, <laughs> I know a little bit. Some I did a little research. It's but you can't say my real name, though. Uh, I had it, but I forgot. Do you want to say it on on air? See, it's yeah, cause my ID is far away. <laughs> let me let me see your notes real quick. I like to see people struggle. It's messed up. Oh no, I ain't, I ain't put down my notes. Type it up real quick. I just want right, to hear how you say it. Since you know all my stuff, we gotta we gotta see if you no, sweet. Let me see if I can, cause I, I um, uh, let me see. Your name is. Shamayim Star. Shamayim. Wow. Shamayim. All right. You, you, you journalistic <laughs> AF. Hey, no, I like to be prepared when people come on the show. No, this is cool. You like, this saying? feels real, real. Because my thing is, if you come on the show, I don't know nothing about you. It's kind of like I'm wasting your time. You know what I'm saying? So I like for the person to feel good. Because it's easy to know about people that you like. Say, for instance, I had Sada Baby. It'd be easy because it's easy to look him up. But it's a challenge when you don't really, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I try to do my thing. Oh, I'm mind blown already. I'm excited. Uh, I think I might know some of your family. Just doing my research. Uh, I think your sister may have a baby with a dude I know named Mike. Oh yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. See, usually it be it be the Karamokos that they know about. You okay. talking about the stars? That's yeah. It. Oh, you yeah. know things. Yeah, your sister. I think her name is Marche. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> they stayed in my neighborhood. I stayed on. Cooper. Oh, you stayed off. Cooper and Warren. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking like, hold on, one and one plus two. Okay, cool, yeah. So Mike, shout out to Mike. I don't know if y'all got beef or nothing, but. Oh, no, no, we good. Mike is family. <laughs> okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. But uh, we start everything off with a salute me while I'm here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we give them flowers. You know what I'm saying? But first off, they got to still be here because people hear that question and then start shouting out dead people. Rest in peace to them, but it's salute me while I'm here. And it can't be an easy answer. I don't know if you're in a relationship, but it can't be that. No kids. I know you ain't got no kids. Nah. And no parents. No siblings. Anybody want to go ahead and get some flowers soon? Um, there are actually a lot of people. So first of all, I would like to shout out Jewels of Detroit as a collective. I myself am a Jewel of Detroit. And honestly, that has been a very, very dynamic place for me. That's mm -hmm. my poetry home. Mm -hmm. Any and everybody that comes out of there, I promise you, like they all have their own spark. And yeah. like right now, that's my driving force. Mm -hmm. Um, I could also salute both of my mentors, Ari Lane and Soulful Poetry, because honestly, if it wasn't for the balance of them mm -hmm. and Hakeem, the people's poet is, uh, like my Joe Jackson. Okay. So okay. Him I, as well. I, I think I talked to him before. I think we supposed to have said something up as far as I'm coming on. I, I can bully him right after this. Mm -hmm. Um, Bad but like <laughs> somewhere between the three of them in that building, like I wouldn't even be here mm -hmm. if, if not. Okay. So I have to salute all of my collective, all of the people that have been intentional and loving on me because your man's used to be terrible on stage. I ain't oh lie. man! For, so I, I I usually deep dive into that later on, but while we're here, go ahead. Like what what made you terrible back then in your eyes? That and what did you improve on? Um, honestly, overall my self confidence. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't I didn't know that I wanted attention or mm -hmm. i thought that i was doing poetry at that point like solely for me to to get my expressions out mm -hmm. but i also could not sit in the fact that people are just really just looking at me mm -hmm. and just waiting <laughs> on me to do something <laughs> exactly exactly and when you see like 
other artists who can come in and they have a wow factor or they have their own defined um, persona. Mm -hmm. It's intimidating yeah. when when you're a new guy and yeah. you come in and you like. Do y'all like me? For sure. I don't even know if I like me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but I can get that because that's how I was like starting the podcast. I used to make excuses not to do it because I'm like, they ain't gonna like this. Like, yeah, I'm nervous. I don't know if I'm asking the right questions. I don't know if I, people are interested. So it's like I made excuses to try to quit. But then after a while, I start loving it and just you know it became second nature. So because I did this because I had a rap career back in the day, but I guess it wasn't good. So, <laughs> so I did this to try to branch off and, and, and collaborate with other artists. But I'm like, this is better. It's cheaper. I'm using my uncle's stuff, so I ain't paying for nothing. Ah, period. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But shout out to that. So, uh, at what point did you start feeling comfortable, in, you know, within being on stage and stuff? Um, It took a long time. And mm -hmm. it honestly wasn't even... Okay, so the real spill is um, I started to take myself seriously because soulful poetry was like i want you to be at my birthday show mm -hmm. and like first meeting soul i'm like this nigga want me to do what yeah and and thinking about the other people that were a part of the lineup it was like i really have to um ignore that call yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like i really have to get my ish together i mm -hmm. really have to figure out who who it is that I'm trying to do this for or what it is that I'm trying to say. Yeah. And like it it took me a while to sit in mm -hmm. because I didn't exactly know what I was trying to do. For I sure. went from trying to be expressive and and be heard and be validated as a person to mm -hmm. I want to impress the poets that impress me. Yeah. So yeah. like I don't I don't ever want to be like, oh I'm I'm no, I'm your poet's favorite poet. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the second poet on the show. I had uh Simply Ashley I, uh, think I, I think Galaxy. Oh, Galaxy. Yeah, 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 yeah. She went by simply Ashley at the time, but yeah, Galaxy. I had oh. her on the show twice. Ashley, like episode, like goddamn twenty something maybe, and she came on again episode one hundred. I did an all uh, ladies panel. Oh. Yeah, so she came on. So yeah, shout out to Ashley. Uh, you know, saying she real cool people. She she do her thing too. Oh yeah, she's sweet. Mm hmm. I gotta get to one of those poetry competitions or them jams or whatever. Yeah, I think she has one um, coming up later this week or next week. Mm -hmm. I I went to one of her slams. I had the most fun. That yeah. was um, actually my first time slamming was mm -hmm. at the Simple Dot Galaxy Slam. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to her. Shout out to her. And I see that you be at uh, Sound Off Sundays. Mm -hmm. I got. I also got to go there. Like I've been saying it for like the last year that I'm gonna go. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like. Sound off to me is like it's it's one of those things that you absolutely have to do as an artist, as yeah. a lyricist, any any way, shape, or form. Mm. Like you have to transition through this yeah. space because one, you're you're busting in, you're you're busting up the concrete, so you actually get to be immersed in the the dynamic demographic of people who listen to your music. Mm -hmm. One, but then two, like Ken is such an amazing and influential person mm -hmm. and he's the type of person that if he sees something in you, he's mm -hmm. like, Oh yeah, I'm I'm Rock gonna help you. you. I want yeah. you to it's it's another family dynamic and I don't sure. get to go as often as I would like to, mm -hmm. but every time I do go, I am immersed in the crowd. Yeah. Everybody like Foulet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Big Foulet. I had hey, him on the show. Foulet, yeah, yeah, he dope. He dope. I fuck. Dog, <laughs> when when Foule shows up to sound off Sunday, it's he got, insane. He got all the energy in the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Just conversation wise, he, that's a funny, funny dude. He might got one of the best freestyles on the show. One of them. One of them. I don't want to single nobody out. <laughs> oh no, I hear you. I um, that's why I love Foule. Cause like I I. I dilly dally on the beat a little bit, mm -hmm. but I'll intentionally oh, get into a, a spitting match with him because yeah. I know that he'll push oh, my no. pen. Yeah, he 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 pretty crazy. Man, you know when you meet some people that's dope, like you be like, you start questioning yourself for what you do. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I leave his music shit alone. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I got I got him off of there. Uh, Lyric Bell, she was dope. Uh, Always dope, amuse, uh, amuse, amazing voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a couple people off that show. Yeah, so it's it's dope. I gotta go make my ways around there and. Record maybe I'll do the podcast on on you know in the back somewhere or something. But oh, yeah, uh, they got space. It's a uh, it's May. The, the, the May about to be over with pretty soon. These months go by quick. But talk about this year and the goals you had set for yourself coming into twenty twenty four. Um. Okay. So, LOL. ADHD is a hell of a drug. So didn't have goals set. However, mm -hmm. um, 
there are things that I have started to move around and prioritize. Mm -hmm. Like the one thing that I am for sure about is I've had a lot of um, <clears throat> transitional things happen mm -hmm. and I've got to see things in real time. Like I lost a family member very, very okay. dear to me. Yeah, rest um, in peace that. And that death taught me to not sacrifice mm -hmm. or, or to not live solely for the sake of like uplifting others. And that's mm -hmm. not to say like, don't be altruistic, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to die loving something or someone that does not have that same sure. conviction. Not fast. So now I'm in a space where I will not let negativity live in this oh, body. <laughs> Don't mind me. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, like I just I won't contain any of the the icky stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody was to put something on me, no, 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 because now you you called for this energy. We mm -hmm. now have to address it, or I have to put that back where it belongs. For sure. So my goal this year is to be as light as possible. Is to mm -hmm. be within my season be within my skin and attract everything that is mine mm. so that's taking my pastries more seriously mm. i have taught myself maybe three or four new recipes this year that's alone dope. i just yeah. taught myself how to make donuts and they're yeah. amazing <laughs> what type of donuts? like you, are you making the the edible donuts like too or are you <laughs> it's, it's everything okay. so i actually made um these all of my edibles have like an outer space theme, mm -hmm. but I made these peach cobbler space rings because okay, another artist um, requested and put an order in. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting the batch out, but it's, it's really whatever. Like yeah. if you were like, Hey, do you think you can make a Snickers cookie? I could, yeah, 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 yeah. I would teach myself. I mm -hmm. just taught myself how to make cheesecake cookies. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that sounds good. I have ate anything this morning, so. <laughs> oh, now, I had an Oreo cream white chocolate. Okay. I, I, I do it towards the end. Bet. My, um, with with being having vegan cookies, I I suppose you are vegan. Um, I would say a clean pescatarian. I eat fish occasionally, mm -hmm. but like cheese, dairy, all those things. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's so hard, man. That cheese is just, oh my god. It's not. And I, I shouldn't be eating cheese because I'm lactose. But I just oh, you know no dairy products. But I just can't 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 stay away. It's fair. There there is a little chemical thingy that happens. But mm. honestly, in college, um, they had the fruit and the cheese next to each other, mm. and just the visual of the fruit and the cheese touching mm. was enough for me to be like, I don't oh. even want it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Cold Stone. Like as soon as, <laughs> as soon as it touched my stomach, it's just like, oh my god, my don't day they is have over. Like little tablets or something you could take. Yeah, I think I need to because I'm talking about as soon as it, it touches, it, it's over. My day is over. I gotta stay in the house. So, that's yeah. messed up. Yeah, like yeah. your whole life, or did you like pop up at like ten and you found uh, out? It's like a couple of years ago. Mm. A couple of years ago, like that's so petty. Like mm. be so. Petty. You like that, that, that's a sign you getting old. Like damn, I used to be able to do this. You know, saying with no problem, but now yeah. my knees. Yeah. The way my knees be hurting, I am twenty seven. Mm. My knees should not hurt this way. I'm like, is this one of those generational damn. curses? Because my mama knees fucked up. I wish I was twenty seven. <laughs> you look. Well, I'm, I thought we was the same age. No, I'm thirty eight. I'll be 38 in June. You got good skin. Man, hey, I hope, hope it stay that way. Hope it stay that yeah, way. Yeah, you got real good skin. Yeah, I'm looking at your, your, at your locks like, damn, I wish I had hair. <laughs> hey. What, what, talk about your locks journey. I know we kind of, you know, all over the place a little bit, but. Oh, oh, it's okay. Yeah. You know? Talk about that. Because my mom, rest in peace to her, she had locks. That was oh, like, peace. She had locks before it was popular. Like back when I used to have to fight people in school for talking about her. Yeah, but your mama got locks. To dread. You know, they say dreads like. So yeah, yeah, it was it used to call, boop, cause boop, problems. Boop, boop. <laughs> I ain't even mad at you. Yeah, but talk um, about your locks journey and what it means to you, and you know, saying the backstory on that. So as a Karamoko, um, mm -hmm. dang near all of my siblings had locks as mm -hmm. a kid on my dad's side, and I would always ask my mom like, "Oh, can I please? I just, I just want to get my hair." And mm -hmm. I just thought it just looks so cool. Mm -hmm. Like we. They all look like Between the Lions to me, mm -hmm. and I love Between the Lions, so yeah. I'm like, why can't I just be like, um, <laughs> it never happened, and yeah. then um, the pandemic hit, I mm -hmm. came home, and I was just sitting one day, and I was like, we're gonna die anyway, so I might as well do what I want to do, mm -hmm. because initially I was thinking, like, I'm gonna just let my hair grow out, and then I'm gonna dye it purple, and then I'm gonna get locks, that never happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that 30 was going to be the year yeah. and when I thought I was going to die, I was like, I might as well do what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've never let um, anyone else touch my hair. It's a very spiritual thing for me. I make my own gel. Like mm -hmm. I have very sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's usually why I be walking around looking like a little ragamuffin sometimes. <laughs> I have to do my hair and yeah. I don't feel like it mm -hmm. sometimes. But um, 
Yeah, I absolutely love this choice. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably the only time that I've had a stress-free hair mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. Any and every other transitional hair thing that I've had going on, there were tears. But mm -hmm. for this, I just be chilling. I just got me a new bonnet yesterday. I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my son, I'm trying to find a picture. My son, he had locks for the longest, like... I'm trying to find so you can really see like the length. He ain't had dress but like locks for like maybe like the last years. Four years. He got good length. Yeah, so it was like when he was like uh wow. I wanna say he he been having locks since eighth grade and he's he'll be a senior next year. So yeah, so he he had it for oh, quite some yeah. time. Them things look healthy. But yeah, I'd be mad every time he get a hair there. I'll be looking at my eyes like damn I ain't got no hair, but it's all good. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but you're right. You got to have the right person touch your hair. I heard about that. My mom, she didn't play about that. Like, she got to trust you because, you know what I'm saying? It just, I guess it's got something to do with the locks. It's because, okay, so um, if you were to think of yourself as a tree, mm -hmm. right? Your mm -hmm. um, your bush, it, it goes towards the sun. Mm -hmm. So these are our antennas. This is, this is the way that we take in the messages from the sun, from the world, yada, yada. And that's mm -hmm. also how we emit. So like when we're talking about frequencies and things like that, mm -hmm the the longer your hair is the the more concentrated the frequency is so mm -hmm. like you emit more or you take in more mm -hmm. so when you allow somebody else to play in your head per mm -hmm. se you're you're taking on whatever ick they have like mm -hmm. i just recently had someone ask me um if i would like reattach old locks or if i would attach mm -hmm. a loved one's locks to my hair mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm, that's because, kinda, yeah, um, I don't know about that. Because <laughs> like, even for women, it's very spiritual or cathartic when we cut our hair off. But mm. that's because we are releasing the extension of the energy that we've been coming mm. into contact with and taking on. Mm. So, no, I wouldn't put new. Mm. Yeah. It's 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 really, really big for me. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I see why. I believe it. Like You know what I'm saying? You never know. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, cause, but I know everything as far as hair is, is spiritual, is, is, is beliefs and stuff like that. Like, I ain't going to put no intentions on me. <laughs> Make my stuff come out. I love my love. Yeah, I didn't even know people do that. Like, as far as, like, the dreads, like, you know what I'm saying? With the whole extensions and stuff like that. Like, Crazy. that's weird. Crazy to me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, everything got an extension to it, I guess, yeah, now. Yeah, so. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, going into this year, did, was you surprised at, at, at something within yourself, like, that you was capable of doing? Or, you you know what I'm saying, was you, like, hey, I'm full of shit, or, hey, I'm this, like, this something that you were surprised within yourself, like? Um, There are two things. Okay. So, one, I um competed in a rap battle competition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I As about a that poet. One. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm, what is it? I'm... One O mm -hmm. right now. That's <laughs> yeah. Did you do, are you gonna do it again? I am actually. Um, we are going to be having a little something or other. Not sure if I could talk about it yet, okay. but okay, cool. um, coming at the end of June. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be really really dope. Gonna be able to get out there again and you know bump yeah. and shake some elbows. Yeah, I'm gonna come out there. Oh yeah, I'll yeah. send you the information for sure for sure. And then the other thing was um. It was just this day where mm -hmm. I just had to believe in myself. And, like, mm -hmm. I just knew I had to believe in myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dame Dash was in town. Okay. And he was um, doing something at this venue downtown. I don't know mm -hmm. if it was Club Blue or what. Mm -hmm. And I was just at home, just chilling, baking. And it was, like, a do-nothing day. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> something just kept telling me, like, you're going to meet him today. Mm -hmm trust it <laughs> and i'm like no what what the fuck i don't have i don't have any tickets where mm -hmm. i need to go nothing um but also people always try to tell me all the time like you i don't have clout i have integrity okay. I, I i we all do the same shit mm -hmm. but so somebody was like you need to try because people really rock with you it's it's like all you gotta do is bring a pastry or some shit sure. so um i rush out the house i'm trying to hurry up and get downtown mm. and i go to club blue and i get into an argument with the security guard outside <laughs> i'm like no you need to go get curtis right now yeah. and tell him that i'm out here and i'm, I'm trying to meet dang so For i sure. need you to do all of that yeah so casually curtis is like walking by he like oh p what up so now i look at the security guard yeah, yeah nigga, nigga. <laughs> fuck i got a lie for it for like, sure. yeah. so um <laughs> come to find out I'm at the wrong venue. Okay. But as I'm talking to Curtis, he's like, oh, I actually just left from over there. Mm -hmm. This nigga gives me his VIP wristband. Oh, sure. Because so I didn't know there. how the hell I was getting mm -hmm. in. So now I'm really like in the car, like, I'm about to meet Dame fucking Dash. Yeah. 
and I told myself to do it. So then I finally get down to um the other spot. I get there, I get inside, I rush, I got my pastries and shit, and I'm <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Mr. Dash, Mr. Dash. Yeah. But it was like he also gave me my space mm. and like listened to me and was mm. receptive. And I was like, I believed in myself. No, it wasn't about whether or not I got a shout out on Instagram or no shit like that. It was solely I want to see if I can do this thing. Mm. Everybody else has these anomalous moments where they're able to thread the needle and make shit happen. Like, we hear about it all the time. Mm -hmm. So, why can't I make shit happen? So, it was like proof that I can get in the room if I need to. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that was dope. I remember that was like, what, like two months ago, I believe. Yeah. I think, um... Fire ass vegan had prepared him a meal. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. how I found out he was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on. She was on show too. Shout out to us uh, to fire ass vegan. <laughs> they be on some. Them boy. Them um, arrows be good. Oh man, my friend um works at Fresh Roots, mm-hmm. so she be feeding me on the low. Oh, my yeah. Shout out to Fatima. Yeah, they, they, there's some good people down there. Blue. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, um, is there anything that you need to work on that may be holding you back? That could be with. Your, your your profession that could be with life like is there anything that's holding you back that you need to work on and still fix time management mm-hmm. and and using my calendar and i'm making this face because <laughs> 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 the way i just felt just yelled at just now was just <sighs> <laughs> but um yeah i feel like my time management mm-hmm. um and i'm not like currently working a traditional job so mm-hmm. but it's also very ironic because now i'm seeing like i'm i'm i got another thing to do today and mm-hmm. i got two things to do on yeah. a sunday and like it's me having to remind myself that i have to be intentional about the the space that i create mm-hmm. and also the type of um image that i want to perpetuate for myself for sure. because it's one thing for me to forget to make something to eat because mm-hmm. that's that's against me <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm still pissed because i'm starving for sure but it's a whole another thing to forget a commitment that i made to somebody else because exactly. like exactly exactly and doing the podcast oh my god people do not give a goddamn about your your time Mm-mm. they was oh you, you, you need it. no you're good okay yeah people don't give a damn about your time there's been plenty of times i had somebody come on the show or say it was gonna come on the show and then so you know you get just the spin move like damn, I told you where we was going, where we was gonna be, and then now you know where to be found. So I ain't drove from Livonia to the east side and shit, we ain't got a show now. So You drove from Livonia? Yeah, I stay in Livonia. Nigga, you could have picked me up on the way here. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. And then you talk about time management, after I leave here, I got basketball practice, then I gotta pick the kids up. So yeah, I know about that whole time management Man. stuff. And I'm so jealous of parents. Mm-hmm. I swear, I be talking to my best friend, and and she just be making it seem like she just got pockets of time and energy mm-hmm. for everything. Yeah. Yep. How? Hey, it's hard. It's hard. Working, family. You got to still be a husband or a boyfriend. You got kids, so you got to be dad too. Then you got to have time for yourself. It's like. Yeah. And then and then she talking about she get up at five in the morning. Girl, that's when I'm going to sleep. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm so see, mad. I, I work midnights just so I can be around. So, yeah, my sleep is terrible. I just came from work, went to sleep for an hour and a half, and then came here. So, it's like... And and why is it like the older you get, the less sleep you... Oh, you, my God. The, it's like the older you get, the time just go by fast. Everything just... <laughs> like when you, when you was young, them days just go by slow as hell. Maybe it was a height thing. Maybe we just too tall now. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably, probably. Now, um, I forgot to include this in your intro. I believe I did, but you are a teacher... And you are a teacher, right? Educator, uh, not a mentor. Currently, but yeah. Yeah, mentor. But um who are who is those people for you when you are in the situation where you know saying the funk, who are those people you can go to as far you know, and to get you back right? Oh man, that's actually kinda of funny because I just I had a friendship loss, so mm. do, do, do. <laughs> um <laughs> That was that wasn't right, that that uh that, that poetry was about that poem. Which one? At, at the battle, right? It was about that friend, right? Oh, that's a different friend. Oh shit! Yeah, no, that Second one was not. Man. That one was not a, a supportive thing. That was mm-hmm. somebody who didn't like themselves and okay. didn't like me because of it. But you know, we we bless. Um, <laughs> but I I used to have a friend and um, he. It it wouldn't be anything mm-hmm. like I could I could just have a really shit day or whatever, and he would just put his hand on my shoulder and be mm-hmm. like. Man sure. up, and I would be okay. Yeah, you need that. Yeah, yeah sure. but then also having like empathetic friends, like um, if I'm overwhelmed about something, I may talk to Ari Lane or I may mm. call um, Soul or even Hakeem. Mm. Like these are just at, at this point they they kind of know my crazy mm. and and they know that I I'll blow up first and mm. then the logic will come afterwards. <laughs> so if anything, I really have to make sure that 
the person that I'm talking to understands that I do have a sharp tongue, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's it's not because I'm I'm looking to like shoot anybody's plane out of the sky or anything mm -hmm. in particular. It's just my first take at whatever is happening is is my most selfish me. Okay. Like, how dare you fuck up my day? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's where I take it to. So I need somebody to understand to let me cry it out real quick and then be like, okay. Mm -hmm. And and also um. My friend Day Day from college, okay. I sit up and just talk to her about nothing, just mm -hmm. all day. Yeah, for sure. You need that. You need that. Back to the friend loss thing. Like, how tough is that? Like, you know, you grow up with people. I tell my son right now, like, the people you are cool with right now, nine times out of ten, you were, you, five years from now, you won't know those people. You got a whole new friend group once you go to college or whatever you do after you get out of high school. So let's talk about friend loss and, like, how that, like, you know, mess with you as far as, like, having somebody that you rock with, then all of a sudden the friendship is just gone. It's really tough. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, in a way, it's kind of like mourning a death. It is. Like, that person no longer exists in your world. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when it became apparent that, that my friendship died, I mm -hmm. found myself in a stunted position because I'm like, well, where am I going to get this support? I don't get mm -hmm. my shoulder taps anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, that shoulder tap used <laughs> yeah, to do a do fucking lot. Yeah. And, and now I can't even go and ask a whole other person for a hug because that's not what I need. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't require that. So sitting with myself and understanding that um, any act of activism that I have to take mm -hmm. is something that I have to take. Yeah. So if I have to treat someone differently, it's not because, oh, fuck you and do, do, do. It's mm -hmm. no, because you, you brought out this type of behavior from me and I, I'm not the type of person to apologize for my actions. Mm -hmm. Because whatever it is that I did, it was necessary. Because I'm overly apologetic in the beginning. Yeah. So what the fuck you does come, you <laughs> earned it. Yeah, for sure. It was an earn and fuck you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, I had friends like you'd be like, once you get older, it's just you can't do the same thing you was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't go out all the time. You can't do bullshit. You start having kids, so now your free time is with them. Or if you're in a relationship, your free time is with her or him. So or it's like, like being hurt because you know that they can't go with you, but exactly. God, you want to bring exactly. them with you. Mm -hmm. You might mess around and drag them, and you're you're doing more damage bringing them along the way. No, for sure, for sure. My brother told me that, like, if the if your friend group, if you're doing the most out of your friend group, you need a, a new friend group because who are you looking at to ascend? So you care you carrying people behind. So it's like you got to go ahead and just move on. You are what you eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rest in peace to the friends. <laughs> R.I.P. to that nigga, man. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, what what motivates you? What keep you keeps you going every day? Um, it's a both end. Okay. So when it comes to baking, mm -hmm. my sole motivation is like when my kids come home in the future, you know, my imagine babies. Mm -hmm. Um, I want them to have that euphoric feeling of like, ooh, mm -hmm. mom is making something sweet today, or like yeah. mom is making something something good. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want my kids to experience the types of hardships that I had to experience just figuring out what my food journey is. Mm -hmm. So they will have their restrictions, mm -hmm. but I also don't want to other them in that sense because like I have siblings who grew up fully vegetarian mm -hmm. and what that looked like for them going to school, it they got bullied as well. You don't eat meat? Like, yeah. what the <laughs> Like, what type of shit is that? So, I don't want my kids to feel that separation. Like, yeah. if so-and-so is eating spaghetti, mm -hmm. they eating spaghetti. If so-and-so got cupcakes for their birthday, they get cupcakes for their birthday. For sure, yeah. Like, just making sure that they don't have that same sense of food insecurity. Like, even as a kid, I knew from the time I was seven, mm -hmm. when I can afford to eat food, I will never eat meat again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my, you knew by then. Yeah, my dad fucked me up. He showed me one of those humane society oh videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will. It my will. mama was so mad. She yeah. cussed him. Like, Why the fuck would you? That's like when you see those McDonald's uh, the little burgers and fries and the little experiment they do over years and it's still the same shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. I ain't eat chicken for a year. She was mad. Oh man, that's hard. <laughs> like, could you imagine being yeah. in low income and, and exactly. your kid refusing to eat? Yeah, and you she, know them chicken legs and them thighs be cheap too. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, she was pissed. <laughs> like, what do you mean? This is food for the next month, and you don't want to. It I'll is, just eat the sides. It is, <laughs> it is one thing that I refuse to eat that I used to eat a lot. Like, I don't know what the hell that pork steak came from. I, like, you could buy a family size pork steak for goddamn five dollars. Like, <laughs> oh, you talking about the um, is is the step up from the pork chop? Yeah. Or maybe a step back. I don't know, but it's not good. Like it's, it's the big one. It's, it's like about this big. Yeah. It got the little curved bone in yep, it, but it yep. ain't the T bone. It's nope. the, yeah. Yeah. So pork steaks. That's that's something that I can't eat now. Cause cause 
the the amount of natural salt in mm-hmm. that is no for sure my yeah. atlanta yeah yeah yeah, yeah. My make bro- a nigga sweat my brother he just uh switched over he uh, that's the only thing he's seafood so it was pescatarian yeah yeah so he been doing it for a year i'm like i was surprised oh yeah but the one thing i hate i mean i are you this person like i hate when when people become something or change and then they just feeding you like dude you need to do this you need no. to do that okay okay no because i thoroughly believe that if you still crave cheese eat the fucking cheese yeah the the, the 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 vegan cheese don't really taste good. I mm. mean, I just found one that I like. But mm. my thing is, if you still have the craving for mm. whatever thing it was prior to you switching over, mm. if that's the one thing in your process of switching over that you have not let go of yet, mm. that's okay. Because when I tell you, I, I used to break my motherfucking silence real quick <laughs> for some lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. That was the last thing I gave up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How Detroit of me. You said it took, a t- it took some time to get that up, huh? Mm-hmm. Man, Everybody man. Everybody else felt bacon. I was feeling the lamb. Oh, no, bacon. That's something that would never leave my... <laughs> <laughs> bacon and ham. Oh, my God. I, I wait for Christmas and Thanksgiving just for ham. Bless your heart. I get a whole honey baked ham by myself. Bless like. your heart. <laughs> <laughs> and bacon. Oh, my... I'm eating a whole pack with the pancakes. I'm dipping the bacon in syrup. Oh, my God. Have you ever tried to make your own bacon? Mm-hmm. I think you would have fun with that. No, I never did that before. Yeah, you just get... um. What is it? Um, uh, Pork belly? Mm-hmm. And then you can like slice it up, Do however. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. Season it however you want, and then Man. it's a little bit healthier because you ain't got to deal with the. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll be. Yeah. See now that'd be my thing. I'm always gonna encourage people to either do the homemade or mm-hmm. or just just read the labels. Mm-hmm. Just read the labels. That's all I ask. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Now, if you had to get this mo- this this year a movie title, what would it be? I still got a group back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot who the hell I was. And then she showed up one day and scared the shit out of me. Yeah. I was like, oh. For and sure. it was so funny. Um, cause, and it's okay because I ain't got a car no more. So I can tell this story. Okay. Because my car blew up. That's, you know, uh, neither here nor there. It blew up. Damn. Really? On some like, dun, 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 mm-hmm. dun, dun, dun. It blew up. But um, so me and my best friend had reunited. And we were going downtown for an event that I was um, going to go check out. Mm-hmm. And um twirling my pearl okay 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 and Anything. i'm from the east side so you know my knees can, sure. can drive so yeah. I'm, I'm doing that and she was like i'm not even gonna lie to you <laughs> i am terrified right now mm-hmm. i get to laugh and i'm like that's a good thing because mm-hmm. when i was younger i used to scare the shit out of her yeah. i actually used to be a free spirit and then looking at myself now i'm like mm-hmm. oh wow <laughs> we don't even align with the same uh what is it called alter ego anymore mm-hmm. like like so when when it showed up yeah. it was like oh and and she been showing up a little bit more consistently lately. Been fucking my community up. They yeah. they don't know what to do. <laughs> oh man! You see me at a party one day like this, you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Now, huh? Go back to the blowing up car. Cause I remember my yeah. mom had um my mom had a Chevy Probe, which is crazy. And um I remember the car couldn't go no more than fifty five miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> and it wound up catching fire on the freeway. She wound up being able to get off and get home. And we came outside, buckets of water, trying to put the fire out. It, it, it got put out, but she had to get a new car, though. It was over. So, yeah, talk about that. All right. So, boom. So, I had went to go talk to my mechanic earlier that day because my car was leaking. And I thought it was leaking antifreeze. But, no, it was leaking oil. Mm-hmm. So, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, just go get some oil. I put it in there when you come back. Do, do, do. I go get the oil, I come back, he puts it in. He's like, you know, you're so lucky that you didn't lose your engine because you only had a quart of oil in here mm-hmm. and do 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 do. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So when when we going to fix this? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you can bring the car back on Monday. Yeah. He's telling me this on a Saturday. So I'm like, am I allowed to drive my car or exactly. should I just like leave it until then? He's like, no, no, you okay. Mm-hmm. Fine mm-hmm. ass nigga. So I had to go pick my mom up from the draft and that was like three hours worth of driving. Mm-hmm. Had to take her and my nephew to East Point to get food, take him home, and mm. then took her to Clinton Township. So now I'm driving down 696 because I live on the west west side. Yeah. So as I'm going down 696, it's bagged up. So now I got to take Mound down, mm. approaching Mound, and 8 Mile. So now I'm on Mound, and I'm approaching 8 Mile. And as I'm, you know, minding my <laughs> business, again, doing things I probably ain't got no business. So I hit the brake. Mm. And the car sped up. So I'm like, oh, I'm tripping. <laughs> this is why you don't multitask and drive. So I, I, I 
you know, yeah. focused on doing one thing now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what scary shit hit the brakes and you go. <laughs> Nigga. So I hit the brakes again because this time I know it's the brake. I thought I, you know. No, I speed up again as I'm approaching this red light. So it's either drive straight and die mm -hmm. into oncoming traffic from my left hand side or hook a right. So I hook a right mm -hmm. and now I'm driving down eight mile and I try to hit the gas again. Car speeds up again, scared the hell out of myself for the second time now. So now I'm trying to pull my car to the right to go down this side street, but mm -hmm. the power steering went out. Oh my so God. now I'm yanking this motherfucker to the right and I'm trying. You and all I'm the like, muscles in the world. Nigga. You see how small I am. Mm -hmm. Muscles ain't there. So yeah. I'm I'm trying. Mm -hmm. And smoke is just like coming up so profusely now. now. No, 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 no. See, I'm I am the best person to have in the worst situation because mm -hmm. I'm emotionally desensitized. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna take it as a real thing until mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. <laughs> so now I um I'm just going down the little side street or whatever, and the car is like smoking, smoking. So I put the car in park, um, and I turned the car off. Wheel still rolling, so I popped mm -hmm. the door open, and I'm looking. And um, I was just waiting until I saw like the ground just like for a second. Mm -hmm. I got these Crocs on. These okay. were the same Crocs that I had on. Sure. Yeah, I yeah. hopped out. Crocs on, no sport. Oh my god. Car still rolling. <laughs> the car goes and it perches up on the side of the sidewalk. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. Nobody was hot. I, I ain't hit nobody. No. I ain't crashing into nobody. Sure. I scared them. Up. It's kids outside playing. I'm like, y'all need to go home. Yeah. Call the cops because at this point it's black smoke. It went mm -hmm. from white to black. I'm like, okay. Try to call a 911. It's not working. Mm -hmm. Beating on people's doors and stuff. And now I'm on the phone with the operator she's like i need to know the cross streets bitch i gave you the address i'm yeah. so sorry but i can't be normal right now there's yeah. a campfire in my car <laughs> i'm pissed <laughs> i'm trying to be a normal person and you want me to go huh. over here so you hopped out the car okay it's it, it, no sport mode yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay cross just dangling <laughs> so you and you and four all hurt yourself nothing no no okay. no, no. Okay. I, okay. and that was the other thing it was the quietest explosion yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I should not be underwhelmed because classic. I'm alive, yeah. but I'm like telling this to other people. They're like, wow, this is a crazy story. But me seeing it, I'm like, this is so fucking melodramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the desensitization. But so all of this is going on and I'm afraid because she wants me to go look at the street sign. Mm -hmm. But the street sign is diagonal from where the car is exploding. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't want to get hit in the head with shrapnel. Exactly. You know, I'm scared as fuck. So I'm like... Mm -hmm. trying to get over there yeah, and there's this Palestinian man. family on the corner they're like hey we seen everything blah mm -hmm. blah blah you can come inside we call the cops okay. so I just I just have to take this moment to say the people that you think will be there for you oh no not at all but that day that somebody surprises you and opens up and gives you genuine love and compassion mm -hmm. it was the only family on the block I bet that everybody did was looking not like, look, look at her look at her out the window I ain't trying to help you with nothing my nigga like Ten people from this one house came outside to check to see if I was okay. Mm -hmm. The black lady who door I knocked on went the fuck back in her house. Man, that's all messed up. Man. Crazy as hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm glad you good. Oh, oh yeah. No, see the the car, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We 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 inside, and they're like, we should probably go inside because it's gonna blow up, right? Mm -hmm. And at first, I'm just standing there looking stupid because it's their house. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they had to invite me in because I yeah. wasn't just gonna run inside. Mm -hmm. Um. And as soon as we got inside, it actually did boom. Because, you know, they blow up twice. Mm -hmm. um, so the engine blew up. There was a car. Campfire. Mm -hmm. Everything's just hot and molten. The um, windshield imploded. The, mm -hmm. the seats busted upward. God, and then damn. when... Thankfully, they showed up in time again before mm -hmm. the second explosion. But mm -hmm. now my car is just like flooded out. I'm yeah. like just sitting there. God, yeah, man. But yeah, that was two Saturdays ago. I saved my life. Oh, shit. That was recently. I'm about to say how long ago. Was... Yeah, that was, that's yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I know that's that's tough. That's, that's 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 the hardest thing is once you lose your car. Nigga. Because now you got to sit here and ask for a rise or get an expensive ass Uber or Lyft or something like that. So, But it's okay. It's something new coming. We're going to be back. I, so, I have elbows, nigga. Yeah, yeah. I, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I got phalanges and things. I am grateful. That is, that's a, I wasn't expecting that story. I know. Nobody ever does. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're good. I'm glad you're good. You can still continue on. And like I said, hey, the car is gone, but you here. Yeah. So that's the only thing that matter. <laughs> That was the one. Cause I used to do this thing at the end of the podcast called "Drunk Moment" or "High Moment." That wasn't a drunk or a high moment, but it just I could just. Oh, it was a very high moment. Okay, well, that's yeah. why I was multitasking. That would be a classic story. 
Cause I start, I stopped asking the question because people gave me terrible, terrible stories. Oh, I'm the best person to ask. I yeah. can tell you about the time I had a paranoid moment because I mm. thought my mom was gonna whip my ass. Man. I can tell you about the time where we was pretending to be secret agents. <laughs> like there are just so many. I have just so many unconventional stories. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's all off of being high or drunk. High, or but both. I did almost get kidnapped once when I was drunk. That's the reason why I don't drink. No, oh, how you get? You got go ahead with this story. You got, you got. <laughs> Got you <laughs> I think I was like 17 mm -hmm. and we were going to um and this was before White Star was White Kids Star. Kids don't drink. Please don't drink. <laughs> God. Yeah, exactly. Cuz my probably little dumb some ass terrible too. Patron. Yeah, yeah. And well, a brisk. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, a little expensive well, for my at 17. <laughs> I, I ain't buy the shit. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. We was with another alcoholic teenager who preferred <laughs> Patron, Patron and then the other one preferred Hennessy. So okay. it was like you bitches got problems. But anyways, you know, neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. So we're like in the car um, driving. And my friend at the time, her name was Bree. She would call me Ming Ming. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like driving. And, and I mean, not driving. Everybody's like got their little cup. They drinking and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. just sitting there holding my little shit. Because I'm like, this is just so. Yeah. This your first I don't time? Like the... It wasn't my first time um, trying liquor. Mm -hmm. But this is my first time actually drinking liquor. Yeah, yeah, because just, it yeah. just tastes disgusting. Yeah. I'm a child in that way. For sure. Like, <laughs> so. I tried to take it, like, take a little sip. She's like, oh, Ming Ming, you a bitch. I'm like, I ain't no bitch. So I drank the whole little thing of, like, Juice Patron. And then mm -hmm. however long it took for us to get from, like, 15 and grass shit mm -hmm. to Hamtramck is how long it took for the shit to kick in. Mm -hmm. Kicked in so hard, I was the only person who had a dress on in the middle of the wintertime, and I left my coat in the car. So I was that hot. Yeah, 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 I bet. <laughs> Made it there. Danced for all of maybe five minutes. Mm -hmm. Went to the bathroom, threw up and did a whole lot of other stuff. Mm. It was like, Ming Ming, you all right? Yeah, ah, oh, she in there <laughs> doing stuff, you know? Not even going to be too bold. Sure. <laughs> so then I come out, and by the time I come out, everybody's leaving. Mm -hmm. It's like we probably only made it there for like the last 40 minutes of the party. Yeah, yeah. And everything's all cool. You know, we all leaving out and shit. And all my, my friends are going that way. Mm hmm and I'm just so happy go lucky intoxicated. I'm thinking I'm walking with them. Yeah, but you know. No, not. no, no, no. It's two niggas walking me in the opposite direction. Oh my Somebody god. Somebody looked back and was like, "Where the fuck is you going?" I don't know. I thought I was with y'all. <laughs> yeah, no, so I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's that's terrible. Cuz usually people who indulge in the, you know what I'm saying, the, the the marijuana smoking, they can't not drink at all, you know what I'm saying? So, it's yeah. not it for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's hilarious like yeah, the the car and you always get kidnapped. Don't yeah, don't drink. <laughs> yeah, children. kids don't drink and and and, and walk with, with strangers. <laughs> uh huh. And for the women mm -hmm. above twenty one mm -hmm. who do decide to partake, please be safe. Mm hmm. Okay. No the buddy for, system for sure. is your friend. Okay. Yeah. My buddies was not systeming with me, and that was you know. But yeah, hey. yeah. Because once a guy sees, oh shit. All right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Awesome casual. Oh hey, girl. No, for sure. You look fun. Yeah. I look fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Give me the worst advice and best advice you received since being an adult. Um, the best advice I received is that all money ain't good money. Mm -hmm. And that's something that my mom has told me my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that actually does save me from a lot of like awkward situations. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that because like, although I wasn't raised in a space where people like put value into me like oh you're beautiful you're smart you're mm -hmm. do 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 she also told me that i'm not minimized by a dollar for sure so that was probably like the biggest thing that she could have put in me especially now with the way things are going like and i'm not here to play around with anybody else's preference for what they do mm -hmm. by all means and if that's what you choose to do within yourself my support is to you mm -hmm. but if you're doing something solely based off of the value that somebody else is speaking over you mm -hmm. and equating that to a dollar, you in the wrong business. For sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. And I'll say the worst advice I ever got was, um, hmm. Think, I think about that bad shit. I do. <laughs> I do. I don't know because it's a both end. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm going a, I'm to a try to condense it. So mm -hmm. I think the worst sentiment I've ever heard is if you like it, I love it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that shoots a lot of us in the foot sometimes because you'll have someone who loves you yeah. and cares for you. However, they don't 
care for you enough mm. to jeopardize the relationship to tell you what you need to know. No, and I'm not sure. saying that that's how it has to be every time, but a lot of us are malinformed on our position that we have in a friend's life. Like mm. you don't, you, you shouldn't feel a fear of being punished for correcting someone. Mm -hmm. If if you feel like your friend is not doing something yeah, that's within you should, able, you should be able to tell them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So I think the the worst advice in that sense would be to to not tell people what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's that's just a sign of a good friend, a good brother, a good uncle, or whatever. Because like I said, my uncle, who my producer, who not here, there's a lot of times I call him about something. He's like, man, you sound like a bitch. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> man, because <laughs> everybody not going to. Yeah. That, thank you. That's what it is. Don't sugarcoat. Yeah, for sure. I don't, don't please give me the truth. Even if the truth hurt, please give me the truth. Don't Man. lie to me. Don't, don't try to spread my feelings. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just let me know what it is. Even if I don't have the capacity to sit in it right now, I'm going to appreciate you for mm. cutting across the bullshit. Yeah. Like, um, I was, I was struggling with having a conversation with a friend because this was the process of me having so many funerals for friendships. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to lose another one, but also I could feel myself being avoidant because I'm not speaking to you about what's on my heart. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. You got to. You yeah, got to. That's something absolutely. I cannot, I absolutely cannot do is if I feel a way, I got to, I got to say it because it's going to eat, it's going to eat me up the whole time. Like that's where relationships like, Hey, uh, I got to tell you this, <laughs> man, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't like what you're doing. I don't like this. You know what I'm saying? Because if you keep letting it pass over, then it's going to build up and then it's going to become something that it didn't have to be. I just saw something actually really good and I posted it to my Instagram mm -hmm. um, and it was thinking about like social situations as mm -hmm. like a computer having a malfunction and the question was if your computer was having a malfunction what would you do mm -hmm. and the lady was like I would diagnose it mm -hmm. he was like well you know I would just shut my computer down yeah, and then she put her head down delete. <laughs> yeah. and then um, she was like but that's not good he's like okay well then why is it not good for me to shut my computer down? Mm. And um, it was, be she was like, because although you, you turned it off and you reset it and it'll work again, you didn't correct yeah, the problem. Yeah, problem, yeah. So a lot of times shutting down or biting your tongue or mm -hmm. sugarcoating is just, yeah. you're not fixing the problem. Exactly, exactly. You're, if, if anything, you're creating more space for your discomfort because now that's another thing that you haven't spoke on. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a fact, that's a fact, that's a fact. We, we, she teaching us something good today, y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real, for real. No, that's that's the fact though. I like I like that. I like that. When the last time you cried, they didn't have nothing to do with death. I think was that yesterday. Talk to me. What was it about? Either yesterday or the day before yesterday. I've just been feeling like very, very ambiguous mm -hmm. as far as like where I am and what I'm doing, and it's because I've had like six high energy things mm -hmm. just happen no, within sure. the last month and a half, and I know that all of those things that happen exists outside of my body it mm -hmm. exists outside of my realm of safety in the corporeal sense like the the physicality of me is okay you know mm -hmm. phalanges yeah. and things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in the mental realm it's it's more impactful because these are the things that i'm thinking about mm -hmm. so i'm going through this transitional time where i'm still trying to find meaning and purpose within myself mm -hmm. while i have all of these things against me or while i have like so many chips on my shoulders sure. like i'm i'm trying to get back to me but mm. yesterday was definitely one of those days and then it was raining mm -hmm. you know we yeah. we women the the sky be crying for mm -hmm. us sometimes yeah, no, for sure for sure no, yeah 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 <laughs> but yeah, i always ask that question i'll be wanting to see if people gonna answer it and stuff like that you know what oh, saying? yeah I'm, I'm the type i'll cry on stage I'll yeah get the fuck yeah 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 <laughs> is it a poem that you can't perform because it gets you a little too emotional no there's a poem that i will cry on stage with mm -hmm. but like i think we we hide our vulnerability a lot like mm. i'm never ever afraid to i promise you if if i was feeling some shit right now mm. i'd probably drop two tears mm. make a joke and get back to what we do for doing. sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 we do especially guys we try to hide it like i remember i had cry about kobe bryant <laughs> hey hey that's cool and my son almost seen me i'm like i, I had ran away <laughs> just so he wants to be crying stuff like that but it's okay like everybody gotta realize it's okay to cry i mean you we are human yeah you know what i'm saying but a lot of times especially with men they try to hide that pain because they don't want nobody to see when they you know what I'm saying when they down and out or messed up so it's cool though you know what i'm saying hey drop that tear dog <laughs> man you just gotta you gotta let it ride sometimes sometimes and as healthy like you can't like you said you can't keep it all you know saying balled in whatever so because like you you feel it like mm -hmm. you 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 feel when 
if you're a little coke bottle you <laughs> you feel the carbonation sure. like you feel the shit bubbling up yep. so like why not just express it yeah when you eat that ice cream you feel it bubbling up <laughs> 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 that dairy yeah now um if you had to tell somebody about yourself but you're going to use an album or a song what would that album or song be that's going to tell me about you i am sasha fierce okay he was quick damn that's the quickest that's the quickest one that's the quickest one. what what, what that's telling me what's that let me know um i think i am sasha fierce was a dynamic point in beyonce's life and i'm not a beyonce fan i actually got um mm. attacked by the beehive mm. on twitter a couple years back Said the wrong thing but um i've been making a lot of jokes lately mm. um and it's just been like damn i wonder how beyonce feel or mm. like whatever and i say that because i'm getting to this place where i have to show up mm -hmm. and be pretty or i have to show up and i have to perform mm -hmm. but like my my car just fucking blew up and yeah. nobody cares about that <laughs> exactly so it's like i have to keep reminding myself that because i am transitioning over into being a public figure mm -hmm. that there will be more called of me from from my my work ethic there will be more called of me to be joyous to to have the bubbles when i laugh and mm -hmm. shit like that like there's going to be some point where people are like why are you not smiling because mm -hmm. i smile every day yeah. so when i think about it like that um i say i am sasha fierce because that was not necessarily the height of beyonce's career because mm -hmm. i mean it's Beyonce yeah, yeah. but that was the the defining moment of her taking on her own entity and mm -hmm. her her sense of who she is mm -hmm. and being like actually yes yeah. but we we got the the vulnerability we got we got the shit talking we got the honesty mm -hmm. it was like all these things all at once and then there was so much happening for her at that time mm -hmm. so to and, and somebody tried to make a comment the last time I made the joke mm -hmm. had me fucked up whoever you were <laughs> for sure but um, they were like no because you know when Beyonce first came out it was her dad doing x y and z and i'm like okay but whether or not the workhorse wants to work it's still working mm -hmm. okay so so whether or not beyonce is handling her own managerial shit whether mm -hmm. or not she is a person orchestrating where she's gonna go and what outfit she's gonna wear or if she has somebody else in place to do it it's still the fact that the expectation is for her for sure. to get up there and perform for sure for sure nobody cares about her her nigga cheating nope. nobody cares about her kids nobody gives a fuck about none of that shit mm -hmm. they they want this woman yeah. to get up here and perform exactly yeah so I am Sasha Pierce. Sure. I am I am Pasha Fierce. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a do you have an album to represent your childhood that you could think of? Um hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say my childhood. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna hate it. We're gonna hate it. Especially the way things turn back around. Yeah. But um what was it? was it it was either thank me later or nothing was the same mm. i can't remember whichever one was the 2010 2011 drop mm. i think that's the reason why i'm so fucked up For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. drake had niggas staring off into yeah. the clouds See, that's, just the, like, that's the drake i i like yeah with the old drake yeah that, was that mixtape um the first back what's that junk? it's the one um the one i'm talking about oh, is the one where he got the dream and uh t-pain and all of them on there okay 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 the okay. album was shut it down and i think it's red and black yeah yeah that, that's um yeah yeah that was the i think that was his first official album that's the one with rihanna on there and i believe eminem and all that stuff man yeah yeah but the mixtape before that was that yeah i'm like damn this, this dude hard like but as as of lately um I'm, I'm good like the last five six years i'm cool yeah no no no, no. ever since uh scorpion i yeah. haven't really cared because what was that one views i people like that i didn't like views yeah, views from the six was supposed to be yeah. like a, a mix of the old and the new yeah. the last Drake album i like was the one that he was the allegations of the ghost writing stuff uh what was that if you see this or if you oh, read this uh yeah if you reading this it's too late or something yeah that's the last project i like from drake and the visuals from that was real cute with the yeah. little clouds and shit. Yeah, 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 that was it. But as of late, and he just got destroyed by Kendrick. Like y'all. I just got, I just got um, caught up the day before yesterday. Yeah, yeah, he lost. He lost. Yeah, he did. And then, and, the, ooh, that last album. Yeah. I mean, the last uh, little drop pissed yeah. me off. Yeah, yeah, because he basically kind of like said, like, I, I quit. I'm, I'm done with the whole ba the battle. Talking about the, uh, the last one Drake did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when yeah. he was talking about. Um, Kendrick did this because he was a kid left alone. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, not, yeah. not you trying to bring up somebody else's trauma because you got to traumatize people. And the, what he said was wrong. Like, if he listed out, he was wrong about that whole little thing. So, yeah, uh, that battle was something that we needed because it's been a while since we had a rap battle. But, yeah, you lost the... Healthy for hip-hop, but also yeah. at the same time, it was it was overdone. Like, yeah, motherfuckers yeah. don't understand yeah. that when, when rap beefs and shit like that happened back... Mm -hmm. 
in the day, mm-hmm. there was there was consequences behind yeah, it. No, there was sure. shit that yeah. was going on. Like you might these, die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but also these were still young adults. These were little twenty somethings, like yeah, twenty two. Yeah. Like we talk is seventeen to twenty four. Mm-hmm. That's where all the issues was. Mm-hmm. Y'all grown as hell with kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy as hell to me. But I think they don't. It it, it, it it goes so far back that it just finally. You know what I'm saying? Boiled over. It's because Kendrick just can't. He just can't not do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So I'll say Kendrick mm-hmm. is healthy and good for hip hop. Mm-hmm. But the way that this has like gotten dragged out, it's mm-hmm. just become yeah. monotonous. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it was it was good. But yeah, we don't really go ahead. Because people are scared to put music out just because everybody anticipating the battle. So it's like you and put your album out, we ain't listen to it. We waiting to see what they gonna say. Right. So now y'all got the whole music scene stopped up. That's <laughs> exactly. <what's... laughs> exactly. Got exactly. Chris Brown and Quavo out here tap dancing against each other and shit. Like yeah. <laughs> and now yeah, it's, it's, it's getting a little. Twenty twenty four has been crazy. As hell. Ever since that fucking Cat Williams interview. <laughs> oh yeah, Cat Williams said he's letting it all go. Yeah, yeah. You got anybody you want to go ahead and um and go ahead and shoot down? <laughs> shoot Absolutely down. not. I... <laughs> I feel like my work speaks for itself. This has been a year, though. Like, this has been a weird year as far as, like, people just really... Having their own go, feelings yeah, about yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Man, because people be touchy-feely, and I get it. If you need a hug, just say that. Yeah, yeah. People been their feelings and been talking shit, and... Yeah, man. It's been crazy. Yeah. But not everybody is obligated to hug you. If you need a hug, go hug yourself. Yeah, for sure. Go hug a tree. <laughs> really, though. You're going to get all the energy back that you, you know, trying to steal. For sure, for sure. Now, we, you know what I'm saying, and then spoke on things, but... uh. Just talk about growing up real quick. You are uh, shop talk. Uh, I love y'all, man, but don't talk about the East Side, dog. <laughs> but uh, you, I know you're from the East Side. You know what I'm saying? And uh, from the sounds of it, uh, you know your dad. You, you say on your dad's side, so I'm quite sure he wasn't at the crib, right? Nah, pops was on the west. Okay, okay, okay. So let's talk about who was in the household and how it was as a young P. Um, it was just me, and my mom, mm. uh, my little sister Makaya, and my older sister Shay. Mm. Um, that was. That was pretty different, mm-hmm. and I'll say that like now looking back, because you know hindsight is twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. But um, I'll say that my younger years is the reason why I'm so nurturing and I'm so overt when it comes to like taking care of others. Is because that's essentially what I was raised to do. Mm-hmm. It, it messed me up for a lot of years because I didn't exactly know what that was or like where that conviction had come from. But mm-hmm. then. Once I got to college and I got my own little group of friends, it mm. got to the point where I was making Sunday dinners, like, each yeah. <laughs> Sunday. Now, we called them high holes, but, I mean, it was still wholesome. Yeah, for sure. It was... So, so you say you, you, your sisters, your mom, like... hmm So, like, in, in, within that time, like, was your dad, was you cool with him? Like, was y'all good? It was, um, it was like a yes and a no. It mm. was whenever he would come to get me or something mm. like that. Because like, I absolutely love my dad, mm. but um, we did not spend as much time together. Mm. And then once I got older, I got to the point where um, all money ain't good money. Mm. I don't want that nigga money because you don't want my time. For sure. For sure. Um, but then once I got older, older, I realized I'm responsible for the relationships that I haven't maintained in my life. Mm. So I wanted to be more intentional about connecting with him and learning who he was as a person because what if this man decided what if what if he never ever wanted to be a dad like mm-hmm. i can't be mad at you for something you did not want to do exactly so exactly. it was more about like getting to know him as a person and his perspective and just like mm-hmm. yeah now uh do you ever think about like damn like i wonder how life would have been with two parents in the house or if dad was around a little bit more like do you ever think about that or are you just like no. it is what it is um because i i had a glimpse of that with him and my mommy for mm-hmm. so it was never like i didn't see like the two-parent household it was just it wasn't my household that had the two parents or mm-hmm. when that wasn't a thing anymore so it wasn't like i was living out different realities all at once mm-hmm. so with my mom it would be you know single family small family shit mm-hmm. but then when i would be with my baba i have anywhere upwards of eight siblings in the house at a time mm-hmm. so it's it's like cheaper by the dozen over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was like a a, a both end, a back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, but so y- 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 y'all good now, both. You know what I'm saying with your mom and dad. Yeah. Like, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Hell yeah. But you no, know, it's it's like a lot of times you know with women, or with dudes too, they grow up and be resenting their father because they wasn't around or hating men man. or looking for a man to take that that role you know what i'm saying so and it's like how do you get how do you get to know your history mm-hmm. if if you cut these people off and don't get me wrong listen listen you are more 
then allowed to go no contact with anybody you choose to. But when mm. you do that, you just have to understand the the responsibility that you are putting on yourself or mm. understanding that there are questions that you will never have answered. For sure, for sure. Yeah. If, if that's fine with you, mm. do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I know you went to uh, Clintondale High School and know mm -hmm. you ain't go there because you, you didn't get, it was, it was your neighborhood school. I know that because, you know, we know about Clintondale. Like, you go there because you did some crazy shit. Either, Quit and fail. It Woo! was either there or what was the other one? Because um, that's a good school now, too. Was Fred D. I remember Fred, Frederick Douglass. You, if you got kicked out, you went to that school, too. But now it's like a straight little boys school and stuff now. So. Oh, hey, okay. Cool. Yeah. And uh, you went to Kentucky State, like we said. Talk about, like, going to Kentucky State, black HBCU, like the, the importance of that and what would be your advice to a high school senior? Do, would you tell them like the, the best route is to go every time black college? You know how I, I just sold a girl on it uh, last week when I was at my one of my schools. Mm -hmm. um, they were showing me where their cafeteria was and I'm like, do, 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 do. Uh, mm. What y'all, y'all think about college? Like what's going For on? For sure, yeah. Telling them about it, and I, my, my thing is, I'll always say like it's the blackest experience you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. This is your one opportunity to be treated as the majority instead mm -hmm. of the minority. Yeah, it's kids, and I'm not trying to say it like these are the things, but these are the things for me mm -hmm. that that blew my mind. They go to school with bonnets and do rags on mm -hmm. casually. Yeah, we have we have fresh Fridays where mm -hmm. you wear your best fit, whether it's professional wear or if it's um just your best outfit. Mm -hmm. We we have days where we we just showcase and we appreciate the the essence of your blackness and what type of beauty that is mm -hmm. like that shit don't happen. Yeah, no, at a predominant. Sure. No, I used to go to Macomb mm -hmm. um, prior to transitioning over and I'm a psych major, so mm -hmm. anytime I'm in class, anytime they want to talk about a black statistic, they automatically look at me in black tokenism. <laughs> They're sure. like, would you like to give a nigger response? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so it's, it was um, fulfilling for me. And then mm -hmm. also HBCUs have more of an understanding at the disadvantages that black and brown kids experience from mm -hmm. within their neighborhoods. So what they do is they um, they reach out to a lot of like post graduation or um high school educators and see if they want to come back and they'll take them on as professors mm. or like people who I have don't. experience yeah. because our literacy isn't the same within um different socioeconomic groups mm. so because of that black and brown kids have different levels of requirements mm. that they need filled in order for them to thrive yeah and there are so many different um organizations on hbcu campuses that do just that mm. Um, what is it? Uh, SSS, the Student Support Services. Mm -hmm. That is um, specifically for um, freshmen and upperclassmen to come in. Like it's really for for first or second year students who've mm -hmm. never ever been to college before. Okay. So it helps you to get acclimated. They give you um, somewhat like an accountability partner. Um, they they give you resources towards um, tutoring and stuff like that. They give you all of the resources that you need to mm -hmm. not only stay in school, but they also take you to travel around to other colleges mm -hmm. so you can commune with other blacks, yeah. with black and brown students, other HBCU kids. Yeah. And then they pay you yeah. to go to school. You get scholarships solely just for being there. You yeah. get scholarships like they 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 have a tier system at my school and they also have a legacy system at my school mm. so depending on your grade point average they're gonna pay you mm. just just because you it, you get a's and b's yeah, they'll you, fuck yeah. around and give you five thousand off your shit <laughs> yeah, like sure. it's it's so necessary yeah i'm so mad that i didn't get to experience that i just was fucking you around can always school. come back for homecoming yeah. homecoming <laughs> I, I went to Macomb for like two months and then I found out I had a kid on the way so I'm like, yeah, this school thing, I'm gonna have to go ahead and come back. I'm still coming back. <laughs> hey. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I used to be, because when I found out she was pregnant, I'm like, I'm in school just, and I'm, I'm not even thinking about class, I'm thinking about damn. I'm about to have a kid. Yeah, you got to prepare. Now you yeah. got to think about the adult stuff. Exactly. I'm like, I'm 19 years old. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> but, hey, I had to do what I had to do. But, yeah. but Definitely had experience. My brother went to Dillard in New Orleans. Hey. Uh, and uh, right now, my son is looking at going to HBCU. So, we trying to figure it out and where he want to go. I'm going to tell you this. Mm. Um, I hate Central. Mm. But Central is the most affordable HBCU. Oh, okay. And okay. it's the closest to yeah. us. It's in Ohio. Cool. But I'm always a navigate for Kentucky State University. Mm. I just, 
I know I'm a couple biased. people. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was a, damn, who, I, I can't believe I forgot this dude rap name. You talking about Rio the Great? Yeah, my yeah, dog Rio. Yeah. What yeah. up, Red? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I forgot your name, dog. Just spared the moment. You oh, know what I'm saying? Oh, it's okay. You ain't got to. I got He you. was on a podcast, too. He was on a podcast a long time ago. Yeah, this is the best podcast in the city. I ain't had a lot of dope people. That's a ma- making history yeah. today. Yeah. Shout out to Rio. Yeah, Rio, dog. Now, um, fast forward, you know, you done with school. Poetry thing. I know it kind of started because you said your love for Love Jones, right? Yes. A little bit, sort of, kind of. Yeah, so it's it's somewhere between, so the comprehension of poetry, Love Jones, mm. but um, the, the the action of poetry, the art form, mm. high school because somebody read my diary. Okay, okay, yeah, I remember, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what, the you know what I'm saying, and you took it from there and just started to continue to build and get better. Mm-hmm. So, at what point did you feel like you was, like, I know you said you was nervous at first going on stage, but at what point did you feel like you are dope? Like, shit I, still I, <laughs> I still don't. I still don't. It, it messes me up. Because, yeah. like, now I'm at the point within my community where we got poetry babies now. Mm-hmm. So I'm not I'm not the poetry baby anymore. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that was the first time that I realized that uh, I, I elevated was because um soul wasn't putting as much energy into me and initially i'm like man what the fuck is going on they don't yeah. care about me <laughs> but it wasn't that it was he trusts me enough to go do what i need to do yeah, and so come like, back yeah. yeah so it wasn't it was something that i had to sit in and understanding that i no longer have the same laundry list of questions mm-hmm. that i need help with understanding yeah. like there's there's somebody else and also now i have a a laundry list of experiences for somebody else's laundry list of mm-hmm. questions mm-hmm. so it's not even me being like oh i'm dope and i'm because i'm doing all of this shit no because if you ask me i'm still like yeah. trying to figure it out but <laughs> when i talk to some of the poetry babies it's mm-hmm. like no i actually am dope because I now know how to help you out of this thing. Exactly. I, I, I can I can ask you a question and pull creativity out of you. Mm-hmm. So like that's what makes me dope. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. What a uh, poem means the most to you and why? Um, I think right now with the space that I'm in, it's mm-hmm. um this poem that I just wrote uh for the Coco's Cabaret competition. Okay, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Shout out to Coco. She was on the show too. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Coco, that's, a, that's, a, that's auntie right now. I, you know what I'm saying? When she came on for the second time, I said, you know we family now. Like, you, Man. Came, you came on twice. And she asked to come on a second time. So, yeah, that's that's family now. When I tell you, like, my mind is is still baffled at the fact that, like, I grew up being obsessed with Coco. Well, my mama was obsessed. Yeah. I mean, you know how your parents for sure, live yeah. vicariously yeah, exactly. through you. So, she turned me into a little comedian. I'm reading Spongebob <laughs> jokes and shit. She trying to call me little Coco. So, yeah. like, so now to be able to do the thing that I actually love mm-hmm. and it be in her presence and she know who I am and her love my cookies. It's like, this is what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. No, for sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's why I had her on here and we had a good uh, interview. I'm like, yep. I'm the man. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> you nice with it. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it for real, for real. But no, Coco, a dope person. So, what, I forgot what I even asked. Um, um about the uh, damn drugs is bad. That's my fault. <laughs> we start talking about Coco and stuff. Um, why were we why were we talking about Coco? Um, uh, you were asking me something about um. <laughs> See, I'm not the person. See, fun uh, fact: P that, actually does have ADHD. I'm not. <laughs> 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 I know we, we were definitely talking about the whole uh, uh, the poem that means the most to oh, you. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said you, you you did that. That's when, you know what I'm saying, you, you had Coco's and stuff, and you start. I guess. Oh, the, the, this little light of mine poem. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. We back, we back, we back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we here now. We, you know, had to compupulate. So that's the one that um that means the most to you. And I it means the most to me right now because, like, that's the space that I'm in. Mm-hmm. It's me trying to teach myself that I do have to acknowledge the, the little light of mine mm-hmm. and, and you know how bright it is. I mean, goddamn, yeah. my last name star. So, you For know, sure. it's like, I can't, I yeah. can't be a whole oxymoron out here. I have to live up to the to, day. Yeah, for sure. So it's, um, it's really good for me right now because one is really cutesy tootsie, mm. but, um, I love the vivid imagery of it and the storytelling of it because mm. I was really trying to push myself to see if I could, do something different mm. but also with that it um each time i say it um the story is more vivid but then i also 
understand that I am I am the story. Mm -hmm. I wasn't writing it that way initially. It wasn't until I performed it for Soul and he mm -hmm. retorted it back to me. I was yeah. like, I love the way you do the do to do. That's dope. Yeah. Cause I don't I don't necessarily know what I'd be writing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so the fact that I wrote this for something but it's for me mm. like it's been helping me to just like remind myself or i've been using it as like a personal affirmation mm. have you ever wrote a poem for a dude <laughs> 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 how, did, how did that go did, did you recite it to him did he read it like talk to me oh um, i mean when you a poet you know you just yeah. you ain't shit for real for sure. so um <laughs> <laughs> there have been a few times that I've been compelled to write poems and then I am that person so I'm like I wrote you a poem and yeah. like do the whole thing yeah. but only one of them maybe two of them have actually made it to the stage okay. and um my attic poem is actually like it's the one okay okay that's okay. That's, that's the one that'll yeah. make me get up there and cry on stage each sure. time not every time but if I'm in my feelings yeah I might just <laughs> yeah <laughs> Cause I could just imagine like being a a, a singer or a, or a poet. Like I would use that to my advantage growing up. Like as a young and like you know what I'm saying like, hey girl, I wrote this poem for you or I got this song for you. you know oh what yeah, saying? absolutely. I used to get mad at people who could sing. Like God damn it, this nigga could sing. Like <laughs> that's a cheat code right there. Like <laughs> when me and um this person would have uh, misunderstandings, mm. I would write the poem. Mm. And I'll just be like, I need you to read this. Because, mm -hmm. like, sometimes it's easier for me to just yeah. put it out on paper. Yeah. And and he actually is receptive. This motherfucker wrote me a poem. Fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> like, who trying to win here? <laughs> do you ever write a breakup poem? Um, like this? Oh, you, ain't, you ain't do that one I, yet? Yeah, I did. It's called Childish. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Was, was this coming from, like, your point of view or, like, was something he was messing up on like oh you know what i'm saying it was coming from my point of view and it mm -hmm. was actually an extension of my attic poem mm -hmm. so um a pisces broke my heart mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago like years ago mm -hmm. and it just took so long for me to sit with because i'm like what the fuck do you mean <laughs> and um also having no contact it was difficult for me to like get my things out so mm -hmm. When I initially wrote the attic poem that was just like me trying to just express and then so I actually wound up liking it. So mm. then I was forced to polish it and mm. turn it into a piece. And it's like my best performance piece. Yeah. It yeah. irritates me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Now, when it comes to music, when it comes to sports, we got people that we kind of like mimic or like try to, you know what I'm saying, mock, mock our game after. Do you got anybody that you look up to in the poetry game? Um, there are a few people that I look up to in the poetry game. Like, mm. of course, um, my my home team. So we we got to go with Ari, mm. um, Hakeem, Soul, Peace Bell. Mm. Um, they just and and I think I've only heard Peace like twice, but the way she flow on the beat is mm. like yeah. she was just born by music. For my sure. God. Mm. Um, but then if we're talking like outside of the city, mm. uh, Rudy Francisco okay. was the first real poet that I had found and fell in love with. And I just felt like he just has such beautiful imagery and he can really just this motherfucker tell her. What, what did he say? He was talking about um, how they repurpose guns mm. into musical instruments. And he said that that was another way of fighting. And okay. it was like, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. But the way he set it up it was, was like, he is he he's just. Yeah. Making words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I was, I was wondering, because like when it comes to different things, like are there actual people that you look up to oh, yeah. to make you better? Yes, Um, but it, it rotates. Okay. So um, my thing is I love to like play around with other people's flow. Mm -hmm. Um, I love to see if I can be inspired in the same way. So like I've tried to write a poem in rendition in rendition of obi west or in the likeness of gordon the storyteller which mm -hmm. is the oh no i keep getting wrong it's storyteller gordon I, if i ever meet this man i'm gonna be so embarrassed about <laughs> it. but um he did an erotic piece and i'm doing a i'm doing an erotic piece for a friend who's putting on a show mm -hmm. i ain't no erotic poet yeah so um listening to him is actually helping me for to sure. find a better way to communicate because i actually like the nuanced perspective that he chose because it's not overtly put in the d and the p because mm -hmm. i'm not that type of poet yeah, yeah, yeah. now let me ask you this <clears throat> without naming names <clears throat> oh excuse me what have you ever been like hearing about somebody that was dope but then when you seen them like i don't know what the hype is about <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and, like, um me and monet told me the most beautiful thing mm -hmm. she um for people that she does not 
you know, feel compelled. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not even like a big get up, make a make a difference thing. She she says that it's okay to um, occupy whichever space you feel like is for you, mm -hmm. and to make space for people when you feel like there is no space for you. Mm -hmm. So, if I ever feel compelled, I will you know take my little multitasking tools and mm. i will go multitask elsewhere <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah yeah now with the with, with the poetry what's the long term and long term goals for you like where you see yourself in a couple years and 10 years um 10 years from now whoo we looking down the tunnel <laughs> um i would love to have a collection of books mm. um i have a manuscript that i've been working on for years mm -hmm. uh which is like the most coincidental ironic poet shit to say but <laughs> really though I, yeah. I have this book that i've been working on for years and it's just been like sitting withering away so i mm -hmm. feel like within that 10 years i should have at least had that done yeah <laughs> um <laughs> i do want to have a string of poetry books um mm -hmm. and i want to find a nice way to pivot um mental health services mm -hmm. and poetry mm -hmm. um anything having to do with sisterhood like i'm still trying to figure out what that is but yeah. there are people who who value my opinion and mm. i value their energy and i want to be able to like cultivate more safe spaces um for women i really would love to have like a girls only mm. like a girls not and that yeah. would just be so fun yeah yeah for sure for sure now you know you being an educator um everybody grow up and talk about how things were better in their days you know what I'm saying like oh yeah i don't know what y'all kids do now but back in my day what is the one thing or the biggest problem you see with kids today well, back in my day, <laughs> we had community. Sure. We had real community. We yeah. had mamas and babas. We had community breakfast, lunch, dinner. We had summer programs and shit. Like mm -hmm. we we used to get picked up just to get took to church. Yeah, Mr. like Mr. Iho or Mr. It was a bus. Like I remember this bus used to come pick us up. I forgot the name of this 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 person, but they used to pick us up, and we used to go to this little spot. And it was a church, but I never I went one time. I never went back again. I was trying to think, is that the same bus? Was, was it a bus y'all picked? It was picking y'all up? No, it wasn't a bus. It was okay. just um, a lady in my building. Oh, okay. Well, I'm all off then. <laughs> hey, I mean, listen, but still, that still counts, though. I'm trying to think, what what's the name of that? Oh, whatever. Go ahead with your story. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like um, that's like one of the major differences is like everybody in this time frame is like, I don't want nobody in my business. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody tell me how to raise my kids and all types of stuff. But the beauty about the way that I grew up was that everybody raised me. Mm -hmm. No, facts. Like, I, I couldn't go a block and a half down the street and do some bullshit without coming home to an ass whooping. No, for sure. These kids got too much privacy. Mm -hmm. They have no, too much freedom. Way too much. It's not... And it's it's not even like oh we don't we don't want to break away their individuality but it's a no because we have a lot of kids operating in in high energy environments doing things that doesn't require like them to be a child. Mm -hmm. They don't even have designated spaces to go and have fun. Yeah, no. Like it's oversaturated with technology. Like when I was a kid, niggas used to be outside. Yeah, till having a good ass time. Eight thirty, <laughs> nine o'clock at night. For sure. Just Hell yeah. In the dark. Yeah. Like like the street lights. They don't even have to fucking abide by the street lights no more. The street lights yeah. don't mean shit no yeah. more. I asked my son like, I'm like, do y'all even like y'all? The kids don't hang out no more with each other. No spend nights. No going to the mall, movies, skating, everything. It, shit, you ain't gotta be in the White House to play a game no more because you do it right online. You know what I'm saying? That's so, what I'm saying. Yeah, FaceTime on all that shit. Like then when they get around each other, they're not talking. They still on their phone. It's it's so awkward, and it's they're all socially stunted because we 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 know how to zero in on these things. Like I'd be so mad at myself. The reason why I don't go to bed till like four in the morning is because I'm playing video games on my phone. For sure. <laughs> that's that's a problem though. Yeah. Like we don't have the same sense of focus. These kids can't multitask. These kids can't. Well, one, they can't multitask, and two, they can't follow through with completing a single task mm -hmm. without getting overwhelmed, frustrated, or needing to disassociate. Mm -hmm. It's not the no, same. For sure, for sure. I'm, like I said, I coach basketball. The kids are all on their phone. I might put the damn phones down until after, unless you call your parents to pick, pick you up, then put the phone down. Because what else do you need it for? Yeah, it's, not, it's no other reason. It's no. like... Because now we have like two and three year olds, they get mm -hmm. tablets and shit, and the tablet got to go everywhere they go. Now, by the time they six or seven, they're socialized to believe that they're always supposed to have an electronic. Yeah, yeah, hell it, yeah. Imagination don't even do the same thing. I somebody irritated me, and they irritated me because I think I was asking them a question about like how do 
Like, what's the difference between you doing this thing on mm-hmm. this app and you being able to do it yourself? And we're like, yeah. And for them, it was just like, oh well, you know, I don't, I don't have access to you. You can't go play basketball. Yeah. So you just gonna two K it up? Yeah, for sure. You don't. <laughs> yeah. Or like, um, what was it? Oh, I was asking like, don't you feel limited mm-hmm. when you play like a a, a first person game or like mm-hmm. a, a I don't know the 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 abbreviations, but mm-hmm. like if you were to play like Grand Theft Auto or something, yeah. you don't feel limited in the sense that you can't just like you're you're not outside, like mm-hmm. you're not playing this yeah. thing. Yeah. And they were like, well, this is my version of creating. You're not creating a yeah. damn thing. Yeah. You just <laughs> you're creating time wasted. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that, that's the thing. I it, and I, I get it, but it gotta be a balance though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta be outside. You got people don't even know neighbors no more. Like it's just like, hey, I'm in my crib. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So the kids definitely need to be outside and experience stuff more. That's why I take my kids outside. Like they play around. Like of course they be on the iPad. They be on the game. Yeah. But you also go get some outside time. Like my mom used to kick us out. It's warm outside. Get the fuck out. Man, <laughs> like, get woken up at 10 a.m. Yeah, like, Mom, it's 90 degrees outside. I don't give a damn. Go outside. So that's one thing we need to teach these kids is just being outside, just being more uh, social. My mom would be like, it's too hot for your ass to be in here. Yeah, for sure. And don't let, don't let her come home from work after a long day. We in the house, we stanking and shit. So, <laughs> like, we really got to get up out the house because no, we 14, nobody took no showers. The niggas just got up and played the game. Like, you know kids what I'm saying? don't even smell like outside no more. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. What's some young nigga shit versus some shit you've been through? When I say that, what's something that you believed in when you was a young 18-year-old that you look at now like, I was tripping? Mm. We're just going to talk about femininity for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that this is something that everybody transitions through, so it's like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But um, when I was younger, I did not think that I was cute mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form. I didn't. I didn't think that I was pretty. I didn't think, you know, wasn't nobody coming to the yard for my, <laughs> nothing. None yeah. of that shit. Um, and that was also because nobody put that into me. Mm-hmm. So what I didn't know when I was younger was that the type of validation that I was looking for. Of course, you're not gonna find it because it's, it's supposed to be in the mirror. Mm-hmm. But it was the fact that. Um, I didn't realize what social currency was. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about how um, people are or, mm-hmm. or, you know, like my my first time meeting a fucked up individual <laughs> really fucked me up because mm-hmm. I, I thought that everybody was kind and genuine. Yeah. So the thing that I had to and I still work with myself on is that you can't believe everything that people tell you about yourself when you're younger because I've had people put some of the most vile shit on me. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's another episode, huh? Man, because the way the words was finna come out, yeah. But not allowing too many people the space to speak over me, mm-hmm. um, and knowing that I have like power and resilience within myself. Mm-hmm. So now it's um, understanding that I don't need everybody's approval to do something. I don't sure. need everybody to understand my angle because. I'm the only me, Mm -hmm. you know, like when I talk to this person, they're only telling me shit from their perspective. They can't tell me how to live life from outside of the way they live life. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's some good shit. See, that's why I know. Like when I do my research for the most part, out of 198 episodes, I've been pretty good as far as like having people that's going to have conversations. Why do you believe like I have my best conversation probably with ladies? Niggas don't like talking. And then we do get a dude like talking like, oh, finally, thank God, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why do you why do you feel like 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 that like like dudes be so closed off and and women just be you know they open book for the most part? Um, ooh, that's that's funny. Like you actually ask a really good person because I have <laughs> <laughs> I have more like genuine male friends than I do female friends. Okay, and um, it's not fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> the thing that I learned. In having female friendships and having male friendships is that with women, we are more empathetic. We are more expressive, but that's also because we've had more time. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, when it comes to men, like, okay, women within women. Yeah, we're going to sit up, we're going to talk, we're going to kiki, we're going to cry, we're going to do all of the shit. For sure. Probably all in 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And with a little laughter, all that stuff. Every yeah. day. Every yeah. day. It's going to be real bipolar, real <laughs> fast. Yeah. But then when it comes to men, I'm realizing that... Um, and and it could be from whatever age, but mm. there is not much space given mm. to men to be expressive, whether it's vocally, vulnerability, vulnerability, emotionally. Like, 
if anything, the boy is just yeah. the active thing. For sure. He is seen. Mm -hmm. The boy is entertainment. Yeah. Whereas the girl, she... La, 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 yeah. la, la, la. So I think a portion of it is the um, the implication of those gender norms mm -hmm. that gets put on us. But then also I feel like it's... Um, did people talk to you at home? Yeah, did people that, that's what... Yeah. Ain't nobody talking And see, that's the home. thing. Me and mom used to have conversations from yay high until I was grown. Like... Just conversations, talking all the time. So, I guess that's where probably where it came from. Like, yeah, all it takes is one person to show yeah. you that your voice is valuable, and yeah. after that, you won't shut the fuck up. Yeah, she probably wasn't even here. She probably was just hearing there, probably going one ear out the other. Cause I, I got that down pat with my kids. My son be talking my ass off. Like, I hear it and be playing the game or watch TV. I'm like, and I'm look like I'm, I can do both. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, or I could just act like I'm hearing them and then. <laughs> hey, you know, but. Yeah. To, to have somebody to have and make space for you for sure. definitely does go no, a long way. No, it do. It do. It do. But, I, yeah, I realized that, like, a lot of episodes, like, it'd be like, uh, it's almost like pulling teeth with some dudes. Like, you know what I'm saying? My Man. God damn, cuz. Well, how you doing, bro? Straight. Hey, I'm like, nigga, you asked me to come on the podcast, nigga. <laughs> you can't talk, bro. And then, like I said, people don't understand, like, this is a tool to sell yourself. And if you ain't saying nothing, like, I, it's been a lot of interviews I watched and I wanted to listen to that person's music or watch their movie just because of the interview. Like, oh, yeah, they dope. Like, let me go ahead and see what they're doing for real. I think the scary thing with that is, like, um, the mistrust that has happened when mm -hmm. it comes to, like, um, journalism from the the earlier 2000s and, mm -hmm. like, how it was, oh, I don't want people to distort my words. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay, less could be more mm -hmm. sometimes. Or, you know, you could just say what's on your heart and for just sure. leave it there. Like, but I think it also has to do with um, self-esteem. Mm-hmm. I am zero, zero percent embarrassed to say or do anything that is on my heart. It, mm. it is it, if it came out, that's yeah, just what it, it is. What it is. Yeah, but yeah. everybody's not like that. Some no. people have to like thread the needle. Yeah. What What do success look like for 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 P? Like, what what is success like for you? Um, success for me is a busy ass day. My mm. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what you got today? Um, today after I leave here, I'm probably gonna go home and bake a little bit, and then mm -hmm. I have a show with Mike Chase at the Ruby Room or the Ruby Experience. Yeah, the Ruby busy Exchange. Day, busy day, <laughs> man. Um, I feel like a, a successful day for me is when the kitchen is clean mm -hmm. and I'm singing and I'm making pastries. For sure. Like to be able to, because it, it actually takes a lot of mental fortitude for me to not only clean the kitchen mm -hmm. but to also be in there for mm -hmm. a long period of time. Um. Or success to me is having my stickers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Going through the process of making stickers. Mm -hmm. I just, um, I think I'm getting to the point where I I know that I have an impact. Mm -hmm. But I'm still not exactly sure what that looks like. So success to me is um, being able to quantify what that is. Mm -hmm. And um, being able to have an immersive experience for anybody else who wants to expand mm -hmm. but also a lucrative experience for sure. you know time ain't free yeah definitely yeah definitely need that paper <laughs> okay yeah. we attract an abundance for sure now i do this thing called making a band uh shout out to p diddy he, he been going through some shit <laughs> i'm a fucking yeah. beast yeah Sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh making a band give me your making a band um poetry five so five people doing the show you and four other people is gonna make a dope show, dope, dope ass experience. Who are you and those four people gonna be? Pylon, Pylon, <laughs> Pylon, and Pylon. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you had to. You had to. <laughs> um, no. So, um, if I could just like have like a super duper poetry group, poetry group, and, and we come and see y'all, pay our um, money, and this, and we gonna have a good time. By way of um, some lovey dovey, smooshy poops, cutesy tootsy stuff, mm. um, we're gonna get Matt Capone for mm. the sake of the the eye candy and mm. the toxicity. We love it. Mm. Um, we're gonna get Ari Lane because she just she just gets the people going, mm. and and so too somewhere between the two of them, somebody's gonna cry, <laughs> and that's always a good thing for sure. Um, and then doop 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 other poets that i would like to see i have not heard from mariah pinsway in a long time and she mm. has a very very inspiring pen mm -hmm. so you want to throw her in there too For sure. um 
and Rudy don't do love poems, but just because I would want him to do that one love poem, we're going to throw Rudy in there. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. What's something that you wish you, you did differently with your, your start and approach to the poetry game? I wish I would have led with my best foot. Mm -hmm. um, and not to say that I didn't, but there are a lot of moments where I second guess myself. Mm -hmm. um, I had an opportunity to perform and it would have been my first paid performance like mm -hmm. but i just i just was not ready yeah. like i just i just felt it in my heart yeah. and i'm just i'm on the phone i'm apologizing and so i'm like i'm so sorry i just i can't do it and mm -hmm. i just i don't i don't think i'm gonna be able to and they didn't even want shit bro yeah. they wanted me to read maya angelo poems yeah. they didn't want a damn thing <laughs> and you could got paid there man damn I bitched up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know better than that's how I did. <laughs> Dog. Oh, yeah. At this point, I'm I'm working. You yeah. call me, I'm coming. Now, before we get to the, cra the crazy questions, what's your advice to someone that want to start something but too afraid of, but afraid of failing? I'm going to say do it. Mm -hmm. um, just whatever it is. To whatever degree of knowledge that you have, start there. Mm -hmm. And only be driven by the things that motivate you. Mm -hmm. So, like, when it comes to baking, I don't bake cakes because I don't like to bake cakes. It's just not it for me. Mm -hmm. I make cookies because I've been making cookies ever since I was a child. So mm -hmm. to be able to teach myself and do it myself, I've learned more and I've progressed more within myself solely because I want to do something. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many recipes that I've known or, or that I've created within the past three years of having my business. Mm -hmm. But it all started just just by bringing the bath. I didn't even have baskets then. Yeah. It just started with a little Ziploc bag. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah, you got to start from somewhere, for real. Really? Do that shit. Hell like. yeah. No, fast, fast. Niggas be too afraid of failing. Like, just do it. Yeah. And you, you never go... I mean, even if it start off bad, you can improve and see what you need to, you know what I'm saying, work on and stuff. like. My cookies was salty as hell, and I thought that my mama was hating on me. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, sure. I used to be like, the only person that hates my cookies is my mama. She took one bite and was like, mm -mm. Yeah. But mama gonna tell you the truth, though. She ain't gonna have you out here looking exactly. crazy. Exactly. So I had to listen to her, yeah. and it improved everything. For sure. For everything. sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out to mama with the real advice and shit. Man, I was so heartbroken. And I got this thing called too early, too late, or right on time. Okay. Sex was sex for you too early, too late, or right on time? Mm. Right on time. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, um, your first, uh, um, your first time performing poetry was it too late, too early, right on time? For the sake of my feelings, I'm gonna say too early. Okay. All right. <laughs> Figuring out life. Too early, too late, or right on time? Nigga. I'm fighting for my fucking <laughs> life. Oh yeah, hey, I, I am right now <laughs> fighting for that motherfucker. Getting dusted. Hell yeah. So we'll say everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> for sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> Moving out of your parents' house. Right on time. Okay. Okay. Well, mm. First relationship. We just gonna say a little too early. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Leaving a messed up relationship. Too late. Too late. First job. Right on time. Okay. Finding out Santa Claus wasn't real. Fucked me up. <laughs> I was pissed. I think it was a little too early. I was Man. mad. Yeah. But I also didn't care because I was the type of kid that I would unwrap my presents and mm -hmm. wrap them back up anyway. So yeah. I already knew what I was getting for Christmas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's worse? Seeing somebody uh, crash on stage, like bum on stage, or you bumming on stage? Like seeing a close friend of yours, like which one's worse? I'm gonna say me. Okay, okay. What's what's worse? <laughs> now this is crazy shit. It's okay. Having to shit a bowling ball or having to piss a ping pong? <laughs> I'm a woman, so I'm gonna go with the ping pong. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, you said what's worse? We we gonna flip it. What's worse? The bowling ball is worse. Okay, okay. What's worse? Your kids catching you having sex or you catching your parents having sex? I'm still scarred. <laughs> so because of my scarred nature, we're going to say my kids catching me having sex because okay. I could be intentional about that one. Okay. What's worse? Having to wear the same drawers for two straight days or the same socks? Drawers. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> What's worse? Getting caught by your parents pleasuring yourself or getting caught by your partner pleasuring yourself? Your parents. One you can't come back from. Yeah, yeah. The other one might turn um, into a I got party. a weird story about that. I got... <laughs> I got caught by my mom's boyfriend. 
Yep. And he just he he would first off, nigga, why you even knock on the door when you came to the bathroom? He just opened the mud up and it was just like I looked at him and looked at me. But, oh, uh, I am so sorry. Y- yeah, nigga, he's get the no, fuck up. He's a closed door, but I know him. My mom probably had field day. <laughs> Crack it up, yeah. roasting you. Yeah, oh. yeah. What's worse, <laughs> a relationship ending and somebody saying they gonna kill you, or it's ending and they saying they gonna kill themselves? Do a backflip. <laughs> Well, what's worse, a rapper wearing fake jewelry or a rapper wearing fake designer clothes? Fake designer clothes. Okay. What's worse, a man come extra quick, I'm talking three pumps and out, or he can't get it up at all? <laughs> Which one's worse? Is there really a lesser of those two evils? I, hey, you know, as a dude, he always, all right. I, I guess the mini man tried. So yeah, he can always blame you. Like it was you. Yeah, you yeah. So <laughs> we gonna say Viagra gotta go. <laughs> What's worse, being a tall nigga with short arms or being a short nigga with tall legs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, being the tall nigga with short arms because yeah. like you still gotta get on your tippy toes. For boy. sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What's worse, no car, nice crib or nice car, no crib? That's a life I'm living. So, I'll, I'll say I'll so, so I think it would be worse to have a uh, no house. Wait, what'd you say? No car, nice crib, nice car, no crib. Yep. Yeah, give me the house. I'm, sure. I'm gonna keep the house. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell I can yeah. walk back to my house. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> What's worse, dying from getting stabbed or dying from getting shot? Um. Ooh. We're gonna say dying from getting stabbed because you actually feel that. Actually, funny enough, I have a question for you now. What's up? Um, I thought you were about to say I got stabbed. <laughs> I thought you were about to say yeah, you knocked not too. Yeah, yeah, nah. Uh, so I was in school and there was this question that was posed. It was like if a man got shot mm-hmm. on Monday mm-hmm. and he bled out mm-hmm. until Thursday, when did he die? <laughs> oh, he got shot on Monday. He bled out he bled. till Thursday, and then oh, he bled out till Thursday, and then died on Friday. So when did the man kill him? On Monday. Good job. Okay. Okay. Good job. <laughs> I'm gonna ask somebody that and see what happens. No, for real. That's that that question fucks up a lot yeah, of lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. So you said if the person gets shot on Monday, mm-hmm. bleed out, bleed out till Thursday. Yeah. And, and died on, on Friday. Okay. Okay. When, when did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna ask that. See somebody. If, if, if oh yeah, add that to the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's worse, somebody talking through a movie or telling you an ending? Um, talking through a movie. All right, now you got kids. Nope. What's worse? I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, I'm, I'm hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. What's worse, not having money on Christmas for your kids or not having money for their birthday? Um, not having money for their birthday. Anybody say that? I think the Christmas thing because. With birthdays, you can, especially if your birthday in summertime, you can make something up. No, I feel like I I hear you mm-hmm. because Christmas is like a unified yeah, celebration. You go back to school, everybody got their little stuff on, Excuse talking me. about what they got, and you like. Yeah, but how about niggas just not celebrating your life? Period. <laughs> That's true. Too. I mean, yeah, this your yeah, this your special day. Yeah. Think about think about the December kids who get their Christmas and their birthday all at once. I have two kids' birthdays in December. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> my, well, my old son, he, he retired now. Uh, he he be eighteen, so nigga, you don't. So, do they get birthday presents and Christmas but, presents, or do they get Christmas presents? <laughs> well, I've been fortunate to be able to do Christmas and birthdays. So. Okay, okay. Because uh, his birthday December thirteenth. Oh, my, okay. My daughter's birthday is December fifteenth. So they still got some some buffer It's a time little, right? yeah, a little bit. Now, once we hit the twenty somethings, yeah, that's when it's bad. <laughs> All right, what's worse, losing your man to your homegirl? Or losing your man to your ex. I ain't never been with a woman before, so we gonna take ex for five hundred, Alex. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Hold on, no, you losing your man. Right. Oh, so you say that's worse. Losing oh, yeah, my oh, yeah, man oh, yeah, for sure. to my ex. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Call up the people. Yeah. What's worse, finding out your parents aren't your real parents, or finding out your siblings are adopted? Finding out my parents ain't my real parents. <laughs> yeah. All right, got two more left, and we done. What's worse? Break up in person or break up over text? I broken up with a nigga over text. That is worse. Yeah, what'd you say? Like you just like you went straight to the point or you gave like a whole little you know what I'm saying school paper, like how you do it? Mm. This was years ago. Mm. I think it was something along the lines of cause it wasn't even one of those we should just be friends. It was like actually you need to just like probably just phase out. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's for thing to tell a nigga phase out. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. you just, yeah, just go. Because I was on my way to go break up with him. Mm-hmm. But then my sister was like, you know that nigga crazy, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so breaking up with that nigga over text was like necessary. Yeah. He might have did. Yeah. 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 Nah. <laughs> Last one. What's worse? Felling at something or not starting? Not starting. Okay. okay. And you give yourself a chance. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. This is a dope interview. This it, was so fun. This is the first this time cool. I interviewed somebody without my producer on the other side. And you did that yeah. shit. It was weird. It was weird. <laughs> but it's dope. It's cool. It's cool. I'm glad I did with somebody who actually talked. Cause it would have been terrible if it was somebody who didn't talk. Bro, I was I was not expecting. You You did you did your shit. Yeah, I try. I try. I try. Oh, wait. You want a cookie? Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, while, while I try a cookie, make sure you... Make sure you don't give me a hot one. <laughs> I got a long day. I'll be at best of practice going... It's an Oreo cream white chocolate. Okay, and Oreo is my favorite. So. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Why well, didn't I leave you with another one? All right, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely take it. If, if I wasn't scared to get high, I'd tell you, leave me another one, but I'm good. <laughs> the only thing I will say about that is, you know, you have 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I heard. So whatever you choose to do within that 40 minutes. Yep. Oh, these boys rap good. Because <laughs> I had to use the big bag. Uh-uh. Let me see. Oh, hold on. Bottom. All right, I got it. All right, I lied. <laughs> It might be something real simple. Yep, yep, I knew it. <laughs> now, as I try this, tell the people where they can find you on social media okay. and some things that you got going on within the next couple of days or weeks. Well, you guys can catch me on Instagram at P the Poet. That's P T H A P O E T. I dropped the E because I'm from the East, you know. Um, and yeah, I, like I am hosting at Sharp Pins on Monday. That's at 2000 Book. Brooklyn Street and the show starts at 7:45, and then we're gonna be at the building on Wednesday. So you got a crunch, but it's moist at the same time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like that. I like that. When I was a kid and I used to have to bake cookies, I would always burn the cookies. So we would have to—I mean, not burn them, but you know, cook them the way yeah. they hard, and we had to eat them real hot. So you like, mm-hmm. I hate that. So no, when no, I bake for other cookie. people, I'd be trying to make sure that like it do everything it need to do. So now nah, this is me asking a dumb question, maybe. Well, no, they say no question is dumb. No, cook. no, yeah. go ahead. So, difference between vegan cookie and a regular cookie. Like, what are some things that's added in a regular cookie that you're not putting in this vegan cookie? Um, So, uh, they use eggs and butter. Mm-hmm. And okay. for me, I will try to find, like, a vegan alternative butter. Mm-hmm. And um, depending on which cookie I'm making, I make my own egg replacement. So, sometimes yeah. that might be fruit. It might be applesauce. It the may cookie. be... Um, <laughs> Whatever else, whatever else I can manipulate in a natural way mm-hmm. to emulate an egg. Because honestly, you don't necessarily need the egg. You just mm-hmm. need something um, to hold it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's some good cookies. Thank you. Thank I ain't you. Lie to you cause, uh, <clears throat> I had one person bring some on. It wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to like try to eat it. Like, oh, oh, yeah. You, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You trying not to swallow and stuff. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Now, you talk about baking, but do you actually get in the kitchen and do some cooking like mac and cheese or? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I um I I do a lot. I'm I'm currently trying to figure out what that would look like for me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like cooking, chefing it up a little bit because everything I do is self taught. So um, when it comes to me being in the kitchen, I'm really big on flavor and texture. So whether it's Macaroni and cheese, cause mm. you know it ain't real. <laughs> or um, if I'm trying to make like a pizza or or pasta or something, like I'm always trying to make it taste like what I was craving. No. So I'm not I'm not the person to to give you the funny taste in lasagna and be like I hope you like <laughs> it. Like nah, bro, it, yeah. it may not have cheese, but this shit gonna be amazing. Mm. So do you sell any cookies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I, I have a whole basket. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. Everybody know me by basket. They know me by basket. That's oh. sick of it. <laughs> So when you back to these, how you like social media, like um, right now it's still um, P the poet. I do mm. have a P the peddler page, but mm. I'm not put <laughs> not put the time into it. It was just too many P's. It was killing me. <laughs> <laughs> put the time. <laughs> and you have people on social media and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. P the poet. That's P T H A P O E T. I got a show today. If y'all not doing anything, you can come out and come see the kids. And where's gonna be at? It is going to be at the Ruby Exchange. Yeah, and if I had to work hard, I'd come out there, but I've been working my ass off, so. 
It's okay. It's cool. I'm I'm definitely hit one up soon. But definitely by the summertime, I'm gonna come to one and make sure I support and show some love. Oh yeah, I host like three and a half shows a, yeah. a month. So yeah. yeah, I definitely can make one. <laughs> if I can't, then I'm just a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like I say, I appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate Thank the you. cookies. Definitely, I'm about to finish this off. I'm gonna say this one when I get home, just so I can before I go to bed or something. But uh, oh, yeah. this is episode 198. We got Peter Poet. You might know about Maya Star. Uh, the one name I can't pronounce, her real name I can't pronounce it. Shamaeen. Shamaeen. In. In. Yeah. Okay, okay, got you, got you, got you. I mean, how many teachers messed that up when you was growing up? Like, Nigga, what? I just put a star on my paper. They used to be mad. <laughs> they used to be so mad. Man, but um, best podcast in the city. If you think different, you tripping. You already know what it is, man. Showers, everybody, podcast, man. We out. Get you a goddamn cookie. <laughs>